This week on The Grind, Tim No and Bill Wilroth are back with Angel Wing Outfitters for some Canada and Mallard action. It's a lifestyle for the rough and rugged kind. The tougher the game, the longer the pain, the better the ride. We do what we can to stay ahead, cause the modern world wants us left for dead. You better believe as long as we breathe, the sun's gonna rise. We dig real deep, try a little harder, buckle down tight, go a little farther so we can look back and be proud of what we've done. Sometimes we gotta work under the gun, don't sweat the battle, make sure the war's won. Keep on keeping on, cause the bottom line, it's a Labor of love we call the grind. The Grind Waterfowl TV is brought to you by Dakota Decoy. Premium gunning decoys for demanding hunters. Lucky Duck. Masters of Deception. Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy. From a seven week old puppy to a finished gun dog all in one place. Delta Waterfowl Gear by Alps Outdoors, where innovation, affordability, and conservation unite. High Mountain Seasonings, quality seasonings, and meat processing products. Lifetime Decoys, premium decoy rigging equipment. Pro Drive, shallow water outboards. Rio, official ammunition of the Grind Waterfowl TV. Share the experience. Sitka gear, turning clothing into gear. And these fine sponsors. We're gonna be going after some geese this morning. Should be a pretty nice setup. We struggled a little bit with cover yesterday for uh, the blinds and then for our cameraman. But today, we've got a nice big uh, brush line slash farm road coming in here. That'll be a good backdrop for us. Set the decoys out here real tight together this time of year because when you watch them in the fields, they are really tight. It's cold, it's about 15 degrees this morning, maybe three, four mile an hour wind. So we're gonna go after it. I think we'll have a good morning. We're gonna use layout blinds against this road bed. We had them all corned up from yesterday in the cornfield. We started looking for cover around here and there's not a lot of cover. It's all froze, it's thawed froze, so it was hard getting cover pulled. So we're going to a stand up blind here. Uh, we'll put it back against the road. Ethan pretty well had it covered up. We're just taking a little bit of the natural vegetation that we did find for these layout blinds and putting it on the stand up blind right now. So we'll put it back against the road bed. We're getting her covered up here and we're just about ready to roll. Sun's about to come up and the geese will be flying here pretty quick. had our first bunch of the day and they were quite a ways away we called them over uh, we got a little bit of a goofy wind right now it's kind of a crosswind they did it though we called them back came in they slid they got a little wide we're looking into the sun but it's gonna work out first bunch of geese ended up in the decoys shot, Taylor. Well, we just had a single come in. Really cold last night. It had to be close to zero. I think it was four or five degrees when we came out of this morning. Nothing really moving yet. Um, we've had one little bunch of geese come in, a couple singles, and we're just waiting them out. If it gets cold like this, they fly late. 
boys found us a duck field and they're hitting this corn hard. They're coming out mid to late afternoon. So we're chasing mallards. Everyone's optimistic. Got some food in our bellies and we're ready to kill some ducks. So our second day, our birds had started changing patterns. Um, again, it started getting cooler. I had some guys out scouting and they told me that those ducks were feeding at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I knew with uh, no switch in the weather, a small variable wind and a little bit of snow and cold in the forecast, that there was a great chance that those ducks were gonna feed in the same pattern that they had the night before. We went to the same area that those ducks were seen the first day that they were scouted. And, and we set up there, it was, it was a pretty decent hide. It was a pretty good trashy cornfield. Um, we were able to get the blinds uh, camoed in really nice. Good right away, let's take them. <laughs> Get ready, guys. Cut them, cut them, cut So we just had our first bunch come out for the afternoon and we're just gonna do a, do a little rearranging here. The ducks are coming down. We've got some geese kind of in the hole and they're wanting it bad, but we're gonna push the geese out of the hole and leave just a lane for them. So this works most times, but we're gonna see what happens open this thing up a little bit. Second day hunt, we were out in the afternoon. Uh, we had to make a bunch of changes. The wind kind of shifted on us from when we set up. So there was a lot of time spent trying to, to move the lucky ducks and get them in a position to get those birds to square up in front to give you know, everybody a, a good opportunity at a shot. And that's part of waterfowl hunting. You've got to make adjustments. You can't control what the wind's going to do. You, you get set up. You think you're in a good position. Watch how the birds react. You, know, you see two or three flocks do the same thing. You know it's time to get out and, and make some changes. And that's what we did. And, you know, after that last change, the birds started finishing in the pocket, gave us some great opportunities for some good shooting and you know, ended up being a very, very successful hunt that afternoon. Ha <laughs> 
That one. I would honestly guess in the air that day we saw 20 to 30,000 mallards and they're all trying to get into the field we were in. It was one of those things that's incredible to see. You know, you got these massive bunch of ducks coming. I would guess, I'm always bad at counting birds, numbers of birds, but we had jeepers 10 to 15 flocks of 500 to 1,000 mallards. So I, I would honestly guess in the air that day we saw 20 to 30,000 mallards and they're all trying to get into the field we were in. It was one of those things that's incredible to see. You know, you got these massive bunch of ducks coming uh, and anyone who's hunted mallards in a field knows that usually the best pass they give you is that first pass. So we'd look up in the sky and we'd see a thousand, maybe 2,000 mallards coming and we might have five or 10 just bombing in on us. Well, we're trying to get the best footage for Nate that we possibly can. So we're passing on these cherry ducks and you're watching this massive flock. And there were several of them where it actually worked out, but there's uh, quite honestly, I always say a bird in the hands better than two in the bush. If we'd just been shooting the singles and the doubles and the fivesomes that were dropping in right out of these flocks before the whole flock came in, we'd have probably been out of there faster. But to sit there and watch these ducks was, was well worth the wait. Had things dialed in they knew those birds were coming they just said be patient be patient and just the whole hunt in general a hunt of a lifetime that we will talk about every year and that's the type of hunt that you go back and you say hey remember that hunt in nebraska it was unreal and we truly will be talking about that hunt for a long time Oh, 
flock after flock after flock and arranging decoys to try and get them down in shootable range and finally it just happened and that was super super cool just out of nowhere it came about 500 yeah easy and I think we rained out seven or eight maybe nine maybe ten it was fun yeah it was, it was cool. cool that's why all the work all the moving is worth it yep it was really neat to see the number of ducks working that field later in the day. They wanted to be in there. It was just truly a cool sight, and it gave you a really good indication of the number of birds that are around. Check out the Grind Waterfowl Package, which includes Dakota decoys and bags, Lucky Duck Motion decoys, and Lifetime decoy rigs. Save $215 on this exclusive offer only available at Max Prairie Wings. Hey everybody, I'm Joshua Parvin with Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy. This is your retriever training tip of the episode. What I want to share with you today is how you can take a place board and make an environment that's easier for your puppy to learn. So much of our gun dog's life is centered around the one command place. Whether you're in the duck blind, you're in the timber hole, or in their home, your dog is going to be spending a lot of time on place in each of these locations. When we bring our puppies into the home, we like to take them out into the front yard and let them play. And so for the puppy, the front yard is basically its domain. It gets to go out in the yard and it can play anywhere in the yard as long as it stays within the boundaries of the front yard. It can get new sights, new sounds, and new smells. Once our puppies become comfortable in the front yard, I like to bring out a place board. And what the place board does is it takes the area of the yard, which is a large area, and it narrows it down into a much smaller area in which makes it easier to teach the puppy how to learn. Something that you could relate this to would be a classroom. So imagine a classroom where there's a lot of children, and in this classroom there aren't any desks. This is going to be a really chaotic thing. The children are going to be running everywhere and getting into all kinds of stuff. But let's say you take this same classroom and you put desks in it. The children are going to be able to each have their own place to where they can be eager and ready to learn from the teacher. The same is true with the puppy and the yard and the place board. The yard is the puppy's classroom and the place board is the puppy's desk. By utilizing the place board, you're creating an environment in which it's much easier to teach your puppy how to learn. It was really neat to see the number of ducks working that field later in the day. I mean, they were all around us. They wanted to be in there. It was just truly a cool sight, and it gave you a really good indication of the number of birds that are around and the hunting in that area. You see those, that number of birds in the air and it really gets you going and makes you want to get out the next day and hunt some more. Everybody's seen these gobs of mallards get into these cornfields and it, it was such an incredible sight because we watched them get off the water, we watched them fly over the sand hills, we watched them get probably over close to Scott's Bluff and then all of a sudden they'd bank toward us to the west and before you knew it they were seeing the lucky ducks. It'd start with maybe a hundred, hundred mallards. Uh, mostly mallards, there were some widgeon, there were some gadwall, quite a few pintails, and the next thing that hunter would turn into a thousand, and it was one of the most incredible sights I've ever seen. They hit, they hit fields fast, when they see lucky ducks in a field, they're on them fast, but the size of these flocks, it was something to remember. No matter where you're hunting, who you're hunting with, the number one thing for a successful hunt is to really know the area and know the pattern of the birds. And that's where an outfitter really, really shines. Ethan had everything dialed in. He knew where the birds were working, what fields they were in. 
They spend countless hours every day scouting fields, scouting birds, making sure they understand the pattern of those birds. And when you have an outfitter that puts that extra effort in and doesn't rely just on what happened yesterday, that's when you know you got a good outfitter that you can trust and you can hunt with. And Ethan surely did an awesome job at that. Visit our website, www.thegrindwaterfowl.com, where you will find past episodes as well as tips and tactics from the boys here at The Grind. Follow The Grind on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube.